always good to be with you and I want to say hi. I hope you're having a really good day. Hey, Graham. How are you doing? Good to um, see you too. Always, always good to be with you and also always good to be able to learn from you as you, as we know, are one of the more experienced certified masters. You've been doing this for a long time and uh, it's the wisdom that you've accumulated over these years that uh, I'm going to pick on a little bit more now as we as I have done over the years. So as I've, as you know, we're setting up a program called the Leadership Challenge Middle East, uh, yep. and uh, this is focusing on the value of the Leadership Challenge in the Middle East. So from Great. your perspective, how, how would you think that the Leadership Challenge would, would suit the Middle East leaders? Well, I'll tell you, you yeah, I'm not uh, as familiar, of course, with the... Uh, the uh, culture there, the people there as you are and so forth. But I can tell you from every other place that I have worked and got to know people and cultures, uh, the leadership challenge is a, is a rock solid model of leadership. Yeah. Uh, I, what, what, you know, we've talked before, Graham, about the fact that, you know, we always need to consider the context of leadership. That's, and what I mean by that is, who we're trying to lead, because how we apply these practices uh, can change to some extent based on uh, our audiences or the people that we're trying to lead or that we're trying to influence. And so yeah. perhaps we can talk about some of those. Yeah, certainly. And you know, in my experience in the Middle East, when I talk about the, the five practices, the, there's a resonance uh, from locals about what we're talking about. It, it relates very much, it fits in very much with their faith if they're Muslims, uh, and it's not something that when they learn about it that is foreign to them. Sorry about that poor choice of words. Uh, but it's it's not something that they find difficult, although initially there is perhaps some, some resistance. So let's talk about maybe model the way and of course, we know that with model away, which is so important, that values forms a, an important part of that. So tell me about, you know, because some question might maybe in people's mind about the, uh, maybe a difference in regard to values from in certain parts of the world and how people should live their values. So tell me about that from your experience. Yeah, it's well, you know, Graham, in the in the practice itself the first description is as leaders when you are at your best you clarify your values you uh, speak using your own voice you know it's your authenticity your words and so forth and then it's about upholding you know affirming shared ideals which for me is about the values of the organization that we're working in, the values of the part of the world that we're living in. And for me, it's people need to see the consistency between the leader's words and the leader's deeds. You know, this is what everybody sees. And so it, you know, if I've got different values than other people, if I'm going to lead them, to me, I believe, boy, I sure need to understand their values. Hopefully, they need to understand mine, and we need to be able to find some common ground. Yeah. Uh, because if I'm trying to impose my values on other people, and it's not resonating with them, they're not going to uh, want to choose to go very far with them. Yeah, exactly. And what, what I'm thinking about now is that other leadership programs, which I may have been aware of before I went down this wonderful leadership challenge pathway over, well over 10 years ago, uh, there was really scant attention to values, individuals' values. And I find that discussions about values, when we're talking about in, in leadership challenge programs, people really get becoming very engaged in this. And, and then they sometimes they, they think about oh, the organization's values. No, no, you've got to first understand your values. And, and what does that value that you identified, what does it mean to you? And, uh, you know, I often tell a story about someone some years ago who, 
who might say, actually this was with a banking C CEO uh, and the senior members of the bank when I was giving this example and I said what that value that you have, what's important though is what that value means to you and uh, so give me a definition, give me an explanation of what that value means and I said, uh, here's my example, I said that um, uh, some people might say, I'm honest, yeah, honesty is a value, okay, and then uh, they may go away for a weekend to a resort, and at the end of the weekend, they pack, and I, I didn't even stop saying this, uh, but the CEO <laughs> of the bank said, yeah, the pillows, and, and, the, and I said, yes, they think that they are able to take this and still be honest. Of course, this is a criminal offence. Uh, but their definition of honesty doesn't it doesn't get to uh, not being able to steal the pillow and the, <laughs> and the bathrobe. And it was really interesting that the CEO of the bank was one who immediately leapt on this. I was saying, yeah. So in the bank, of course, honesty would want to be a significant that you know representation yeah. of their value. Well, it, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, that, that's such a great example and. You know, I we uh, we've we've got a video case that we used to use. It's somewhat dated now. Uh, about a CEO, and I don't want to just focus on CEOs, but he ran a manufacturing facility, a mining operation in the United States, and he, you know, the video is about you know safety was a key value in that institution. They wanted people to go home in at least the same state of health as when they arrived. Yeah. And their their safety uh, standards were, you know, they weren't hitting the numbers they needed to, I guess. And people said, well, the reason is you. You're a lousy role model. And this guy was flummoxed. He's, what do you mean I'm a lousy role model? And they said, well, look, you don't hold the handrails when you're going up and down the stairs. You don't wear safety goggles. Oh, and by the way, when you're riding your motorcycle, you don't wear a helmet. And he was kind of shrugging his shoulders. Well, what does my riding a motorcycle without a helmet have to do with our safety standards? And what he learned was people are watching you all the time around your values. Absolutely. And you can't just live them between, you know, the work hours. It, are you living them or are you not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Living them is the important part here, right? You've got to be living those values rather than just saying, well, I'm, I'm, when I go home, I don't need to wear a helmet. Eh. No. Exactly. But I'll tell you also, Graham, that, uh, you know, we, you and I have talked about this before, how important the value of respect is. And it's a value that comes up in a lot of different areas around the world. But as leaders, we really have to remember that, Respect is defined by the other people or the other person. I think I may be respecting you based on the way I communicate with you or the job opportunities that I give you or whatnot. But if you're not feeling respected by me, then I am not demonstrating that value to you. Yeah, yeah. And boy. That's why we've always got to keep our eyes open on the people that we're trying to lead. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, respect as a, in this part of the world, in the Middle East, respect is certainly if, if they, we're talking Muslim culture, respect is such an important part of their culture. And I've, I've said before, I, I don't need to explain to a Muslim audience what respect is. Uh, that's so relevant for them. They live it all the time. But here's one slight difference in that, and I often explain this to people in regard to asking people what this value means to you, that that is what's important, <clears throat> right? So yes, that is your value, if it's honesty, it's integrity, if it's success, what is it? But what does it mean to you? So right. uh, and then when we ask that question of that person, we get a deeper understanding of their, rel their relationship with and their ability to live that value. So here's one that I, exactly. that I often, well, I haven't said it for a little while, but there was a woman that I was working with. She was she was a local woman from the Middle East. So she was of the Muslim faith. And when we looked at her values, and I asked her to identify her top six values, uh, respect was one of them. Sure. 
So I said to her, as I did with the others, so what does respect mean to you? And she said, well, it means that you will respect me and you will show me respect. Now, when <laughs> I share that with people, I say, um, so guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to show her respect. Of course I would all the time. And I often have people saying, but that's not the, the, what the definition of respect is. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to challenge her on that. That's what she wants. That's what she believes. And she's going to get it from me. Because if I do right. that, I'm going to get it back. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Graham, as, as we work in different parts of the world with different people, you know, I would, I would feel compelled to ask her, okay, I want to be sure that what it looks like when I'm showing you respect really and good. what it looks like when I'm not showing you respect. Because if I think I am and she thinks I'm not, then I am not showing her respect. Uh, absolutely. And you well said. It's about assumptions. We Unfortunately, we make assumptions. And, and what I yes, did in did. this case was that I assumed that what I would be showing her would be the respect that she would be satisfied with. But she may not have. She may have, may have had other ways of, of wanting this. And this, this yeah. kind of reminds me of that. <clears throat> we're getting off the track a little bit in terms of leadership challenge, but it's that old cliche in the customer service area, which we all knew it's been around a long time, that is treat the customer the way you would like to be treated. No, treat the customer the way they would like to be treated yeah. and find out how they would like to be treated. And when I'm in the Middle East, if I say this, use this as an example, so if you're dealing with a sheikh, uh, and you're going to treat him the way you want to be treated, it's probably going to be a vastly <laughs> different experience for him. So yeah. what, you're absolutely right. I really should have said to her, it's really good. What would, what would my behavior in showing you respect look like to be best right. for you? Right. And, and you know, Graham, it's everybody that you're working with and so forth realize this, but when you're in a leadership position, it requires you to make sacrifices. You don't sacrifice everything, and it's not about sacrificing your values, but there can be some sacrificing of your comfort wow. in dealing with people that have different values or different definitions of similar values. And it just might feel a little bit awkward on occasions when you're when you're dealing with people like that and we just have to sit there and take that big deep breath and realize you know I certainly don't want my followers to be awkward I want them to be doing the best they can possibly do and be the best they could possibly be so I might have to learn a few things here about how to really appeal to their wants and their needs and their values which might be a bit foreign to me. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. That's what comes with the territory. Yeah, so of course what you're really what you're saying, and I it's absolutely true, that sometimes things are uncomfortable for leaders. Uh, sometimes they they don't think that this is I don't understand, or maybe I've got it wrong or whatever. But so often, let's use the word manager. Now, the manager wants the, the, the people that they are managing to conform to what he or she wants. <clears throat> I'm the manager. This is the way you should be doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas a leader is very, it's different. <clears throat> so you're talking now about the leader-manager role, leader-manager, so that the leader <clears throat> behavior comes into play and gets better results rather than the manager who is directive and who is expecting these behaviors to be e executed all the time. So even in terms of values, a, a, a leader could feel uncomfortable about the way he or she is dealing with, with that. Yeah. Really good. I remember someone... Yeah, in, in all... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just I was going to say that um, it's not just across geographic cultures, uh, different organizations that you work in or work with that have their own cultures, it's the same type of feeling. You know, you just have to really try to get a sense of what's appropriate and what's not. And again, in the United States, oh my gosh, every type of organization you can possibly think of exists over here. 
uh, you know, including um, Muslim uh, organizations where, you know, that, that's the, the, the people that work in those. And so we have a whole, you know, variety of different organizations and we, you, you kind of have to figure out the rules <laughs> because they can be slightly different. And uh, so it, it, we just really, as leaders, have to be mindful of uh, it. It's about bringing out the best in others, and not just trying to impose our will or our yeah, values abs- on them. Ab- absolutely, and and that's why coming back to this initial starting point, that when a leader understands what his or her values, spend the time we do on values and model the way. That's yeah. So let's take it a little bit further about why we spend the time we do on values and model the way. Yeah, it's, uh, Graham, I I tell people this all the time, and um, it's the, I I, I suggest to people that there is a huge price they pay every day when they go to work, and that price is they're trading a day of their life. Yeah. Yeah for for work and i mean you know depending on the hours it's you'll go home and spend some time with family and all that but still a good portion of the day is spent at work and so i really truly hope that people can find a way to love their work for that reason because it's a huge cost yeah and if we're not clear on our values the values to me are those sources of satisfaction these are things i really need to bring joy and satisfaction and fulfillment in my life, if we're not clear on what those are, boy, then it's 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 going to make it more difficult for those hours we spend at work to be worth the price that we're paying for those. So let's drill this down a little bit further. This, what's also going through my mind is that each of the five practices um, are going to support people enjoying what they're doing. Uh, Agree. So this, in terms of model the way and understanding values, let's talk a little bit more about why you particularly say that understanding and living your values and being in an environment where your values are supported, why that's going to have such an impact on you loving what you're doing. I can give you a, a, an example here. Uh, back earlier in my career when I was working with another company, I, w- I was I was enjoying the work. I had a good career. Uh, everything was pretty good, but you know there was a couple things I just couldn't put my finger on, and it, I, I wasn't just overly disappointed. But you know it wasn't just right. There was something off a little bit. And then the first time I went through and really did a, you know, some clarity on my values and so forth. I really recognized those values that were important to me, and it just, it shown a spotlight on the areas of the company that I was dissatisfied with. I didn't even realize it at the time until I had clarified my values. And to make a long story short, I left the company within a couple of years because I did not believe that I would ever get the kind of satisfaction on my values that I needed to get from that organization. Mm, mm, mm. And I've never looked back. Never looked back. Yeah, and look, when you when you say that, it's when I, I'm I give examples and perhaps it's a little, little bit extreme, but as a facilitator and coach and the work that I do, there are organizations that I would choose not to work with. And mm-hmm. You know, here's one. Uh, some years ago, I was uh, after I delivered a presentation at a conference. Someone indicated that some of the guests at the conference from a particular company um, were really, really pleased with what I did. And this person said, "You know, Graham, I think they're going to want to come and you know have you come and work for them to help their business become even more successful." And my response was, "You know, I I, I don't think I can." And I didn't go yeah. any further than that, but they were selling a product which is absolutely against my belief. And this is cigarettes, the cigarette company. Mm-hmm. And and for my integrity, 
which is one of the values. Uh, the, uh, the idea of coming in to help a company grow their profits and be better at what they're doing, to make more money, to be able to pay me uh, for, for helping them be, build a product sale that I fundamentally disagree with, uh, was absolutely, I, I couldn't do it. Now, I, I don't carry a big banner saying stop smoking, um, but it was one where my values said, you know, I, I, I have to choose something, I can't, I can't do that. Because I, if I was working well, with them and doing it, I would be feeling this is this is a mismatch. This is not 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 going not constant not consistent with my values. And well, and it's Graham, and that that's a great example. There, you know, if you're working with an organization that says, "Hey, w w we want you to work on uh, on religious holidays that you hold sacred." Sure. Well, the, that's probably not going to work with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just that we don't have a fit here. So we let's uh, let's move on. So we can be a, a lot of smaller things like that, which nothing around values is small. That they're they're always that important. But you know, again, for for your folks that you're working with, you know, the message is every day people are watching them all the time. Whether they know they're being watched or not, you know, yep. you're, you are being watched and yes. you just have to understand that and make sure that people see what you want them to see. You don't have any control that they're looking at you, but you have total control of what they see and what you want them to see is that that credibility you have by linking what you say is important and what you say you're going to do with the things that you actually do. Yeah, it is absolutely living the values and it is so true that you are being watched. As a leader, you're being watched and, and what you should be showing is what you want people to see <clears throat> um, and, and what you want them to learn from and what you want them to feel aligned to uh, because you're being watched all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens. And remember, in the leadership challenge, the first practice we normally talk about is model the way, because if people don't see you as worthy to follow, because you're not consistent between word and deed, and they don't know if they can trust you, then it doesn't matter what else you're going to do for them or with them, their hearts are not going to be in it. Absolutely. They may work for you as a manager, but they likely are not going to give 100% uh, of themselves to follow you as a leader. They're That's not gonna, why it's so important. Yeah, they're not going to want to climb the mountain with you. They're not they going to want to achieve those mm -hmm. great results. Even though they, you, know, you might be painting the picture of a wonderful vision uh, as to where we're going, but if they have issues around... You, what you're saying and what you're actually doing is being two different things, no, nah, they're not going to be there with you. They're not going to be doing this. Mm -hmm. So values are really important. And I know that in the, in the model of the way, we talk about D-W-Y-S-Y-W-D. And it, when I do a workshop, it doesn't take very long for someone to find out what that really means. Do, that, do what you say you'll do. Right. And here in the Middle East, I think I may have mentioned that was it when I was in Sudan some years ago, one of the participants said, that's in the Quran. <clears throat> really? Uh, and he gave me the words. <laughs> he gave me the words from the Quran, which I've learned. And when I say those words, no Arab speaker understands me, but at least I make an effort to say the words. Uh -huh. And after a little while, they might get it. So basically, it's in the Quran that you've got to do what you say you will do. And yeah. someone said, this is the, one of the biggest sins if you don't do this. I'm saying, so this is, mm -hmm. this is in your faith. Right when and when you do what you say you will do, you build credibility. Your your values are supporting supported. You're doing this. You're living your values. This is so important, and this is nothing new. It's in the Quran. And, and Graham, I'll tell you uh, one of the things I've learned is that you build more credibility when you say something and then do it as opposed to just doing it. When I tell you I'll have a report to you by 4 o'clock and I do it, my credibility is higher yep. than if I just deliver the report. So yeah. that 
A part on do what you say you will do is really important, which is why we come back and say then you have to be prepared to say what's important to you. What do you value? And when you say it and then connect it, I believe in honesty and I'm going to live an honest life. And when people see that, you have more credibility than just living an honest life. Yeah, yeah. So say it and do it. Yeah. Right? Say it and live it. Steve, this has been really valuable, and I thank you for your time, as always. It's been always a learning experience for me. I always enjoy our conversations, and for you to share your time and your wisdom with me, I am most grateful. And I'm sure the people who join in and listen to, the, to us, they will also appreciate the same way as I am. Well, I hope so. You know, Graham, you and I are both in this to help create more and better leaders around the world. And anything that each of us can do to make that happen is it just makes us both feel like that 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 time we're investing in our work, uh, it's it's worth the price. Absolutely. We'll put it, it that it, way. It is a journey yeah. that we, we both are committed to and getting the results. It's always important. Good deal. Because we, as I've, as well, I've good talking with you, Graham. We don't know the impact of what we do and how that ripple goes around the world. Yeah. So take care, my well, friend. It's been really right. good. But we, Thanks so much. Good talking to you too. Take care now. Bye-bye.